I think this is a swallow pen. And I looked it up on my loop. Where's my loop? I thought it said servo, but I think it says swallow. Non breakable fountain pen. No, it says servo pen. It does say servo, but it has a long, long lever, which is a sign of the Moore Pen Company. And Moore, the maybe Todd Pen Company. I can't see in my fucking house. Okay, then the iridium is quite worn. It, it looks, rather than sort of rounded like that, it's sort of like this. There's still iridium here. So it sort of wants to make those people that are making those nibs that go from big to bigger and bigger still, that's what the nib looks like, where they've got, you know, a, they, they take a big chunk of metal and they have four, they put a pen on top of a pen on top of a pen nib. This is what they're, that looks like, that shape of a nib. So it's very, um, It's hard for me to handle because you have to have the entire nib placed exactly in that angle to make it work. For this one, you know, I can sort of rotate how I hold this pen and it still will make a line. A pen that has a broad blobby nib, you have to hold more exactly, I guess. Now why do I have this here? That's why. Is that what's gonna make? Oh, take out the old crunchy sack, which I can now do as soon as I find the tool I need. And this, um, pen, I don't remember what nib it had, but it wasn't very interesting. So I thought I could put a nib in it that was more interesting to me. Why are you so tight getting back in? I hate when they're too tight. See, this looks like a swan as well because of that long, long nib. I wonder what would happen if I were to polish this a little bit. Let's see. I normally don't do this with silver, but I'm just curious if this is in fact silver. I mentioned it is. Does have some home marks on it, which you normally don't see, or you don't see on American pens. What did they right there? What do they say, Pierre Gustafson? Let's take a look. J-P-O something with a something and a lion and a something. 
So a hallmark, some British company. Zoomably. And another thing that's sort of weird about this pen is this round ring right here. And I think that might be, I think there's a split along this line right there. So I think I can put this in with my pens that are, that have damage to them. I think that would be a perfect spot for this pen. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a sack in it. I'll find a nice nib and just have it, and I can put a sack in it any time I want, but I think that ring is in a way the interesting part of this pen for me. An interesting part of this pen, Flora Montgomery. Okay, one less pen to deal with. This one, what is this like? What kind of nib does this have? Very fine. So I will put a sack in this one because this, my, one of my neighbors is looking for a very fine nibbed pen. What's wrong? It's because there's the sack in here still. That's what's wrong with it. And because it screws in, I want to make sure I put a sack that will not bunch up when I'm screwing it in, which sometimes happens. Five people are watching me and no one has said who they are. Which they don't have to do. But it's nice when you do that. I'm making coffee to, for myself because I did not have any coffee today, and I think that might be one of the one of my issues and why I'm malfunctioning today. Uh, because it's a screw cap, I have to thread it from the right beginning, which will be the one after this. That way the nib and the lever line up. This nib sack did not get screwed up. So I'll show her this one. Show her that one. Clemente. What is that green pen in the box? Looks fantastic. This one? This one? This one? Or this one? I didn't put a sack in this one, did I? Yet. This is a Schaefer. Touchdown. So it fills by doing that. This is a Schaefer, yes, a Schaefer touchdown. In sort of the fattest size, I think, that they made.
fix this one. I don't know if I have one of these in my in my collection. I probably do. It's not a symphony pen. It was sort of made after they made the symphonies. It's sort of the love child of a symphony and a Ventura, which was the burp pen. Um, uh, does, is laziness a reason? I have talcum powder here. I can certainly use it. Um, I'll use it on this one. How about that? I've never really felt the need to do that, but there's some talc right here, so I will. It may help them go in easier, slide in easier when they're really, really tight. But I often will put. I don't generally put exactly the largest possible sack in a pen that I could. Why don't you do that here? And so here's some talcum. Um, I don't do that for a couple of reasons. Sometimes I I'm sometimes afraid of a pen just where someone's sort of manhand manhandling it and if there's a lot of ink in it it's going to go all over the place and they won't like it so somehow that's sort of what I why I do it I guess Well yeah so valid it's such a like uh, I don't have time I'm lazy So I'll show this to that lady, that nice lady. It's another fine nibbed pen. I might have a taper right I could loan her. No, they're ever sharp. This has a very just the facts, ma'am, nib. Where did I go? You mean where? For all of these months that I've been away? I was mainly in Minnesota. And I'm having a very difficult time coming back to the real world here because I know I'm going to have to go back to the Minnesotan world pretty soon because we're selling our house. Put a sack on this one. This doesn't have a pressure bar. I need to put a pressure bar on it first. That needs a nib. This needs to go. In there. This needs to be sacked.
Come on, get out of there. Okay, what's wrong? How far does this go in? It's all the way in, so it's just some little bit of sack crud in there somewhere. So anyway, the, fixing this pen for a customer that I met last year came back this year and he's been to my house many times and bought a number of pens. And I know what he likes and he knows I know what he likes and I give him choices and he gives me money and we're very happy. His. That's not his. And he liked this one. No, it was this one. This is one I had to soak and take apart. It's coming apart. I think this is a pick pen. But I don't know. I have to look it up. I need coffee. That's what I need. needs to be soaked as well. Be right back. Get out of here alive. Back with coffee. <clears throat> Very hot coffee. Bitter. Bitter and hot. Come 
to think of it bitter and hot. Laura. Any questions anyone has on anything? Anyone? Love them ever sharps. They are pretty lovable. I love them too. Nice and cool design, nice and robust. Isn't ever sharp without a clip. For that. I don't care. It's so it's so nice without a clip. I mean, it is nice even without a clip. I should say. Very sturdy. Hello, Attilo. This is a pen that I bought quite some time ago and uh, put a dip pen nib in, making it into a Franken pen. And then evidently I forgot all about it and just discovered it. And I thought, not only is the pen beautiful, 
but the nib is just amazing. So let's put a sack in it and make it even better. How about that? In this case, it's a sack that I will not use to actually fill the pen because I use these at my desk and I dip them. But I need the sack to equalize the pressure or whatever the word is something or rather the, the press pressure make it so that ink just doesn't fall out it's like when you're drinking your coca-cola with a nice with with a straw you suck in the straw and you hold the end of the straw with your finger covering the end and it will stay covered. But when you let go, the ink falls out and that's what happens if you, if you sort of are having a pen that has a feed that maybe holds a little more ink. Then you that's right, just cram the pen nib you just rediscovered into the wall. Very nice. The wyvern pens. Um, I think I have one, but I don't even know that. Is it a gold nibbed pen or steel? No hodge. No, it goes down to there, it goes to there. Yes, we've got lots of room for that pen nib. Yay. That goes to my pen desk. Gold. The logo is a dragon. It sounds like it's a British pen. Is it a British pen? I may have one. And it has a really cool nib on it. And it's hard rubber, like this, this color. And the nib is, is quite cool. Now I might be able to put my little fingers on it right now. It was a great pen, but I've only seen one in my life, and I own the one I've seen. I imagine yours would be equally good, but
There it is. I don't know that many British pens. See, here's the nib. The nib is sort of cut, comes out and flares way out and then goes back in and sort of has a triangular bend to it, which to me spells disaster. But this is the only one I have. It's pretty cool, though. No, this is a Waverly. Sorry, not Wyvern. Waverly. I do think I have a Wyvern, though. I, I may know some of the, I really don't know the European pen companies uh, at all, really, other than sort of the common three or four. So I'm not a good one to answer your questions, I'm afraid. This one I broke, that little piece of abalone fell off. Well, I'm going to I'm going to take my coffee over to the couch. Sit down. So, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>